Welcome back to another video from SkiBoatPartsOnline.com. My name is Ron. Today we're going to take a look at engine installation and maybe a quick test run at the end uh, before we finish our project up. Remember, if you like our videos, to uh, subscribe at the end. There's a little button to click on. Uh, we we'll hope you enjoy. Okay, this is our uh, new Marine Power 5.7 fuel-injected uh, engine that's replacing our tired old 351 Ford. Uh, it's 30 years old and there are a lot of differences between the old motor and the new motor. I'm going to try to point out some of these features. Um, I have what I call dressed this engine. It is now what I believe is ready to go into the boat. But before that happens there's a lot of things that you have to prepare for uh, to make the transition go easy and fast. Um, so I'm going to start at the front of the motor here. Uh, like the Ford Inmar we took out, this has a crank driven front water pump. Uh, this impeller uh, being up front is nice and easy to change, so there's no real big difference there. Uh, another difference, or a difference, is dual belts. This is a marine power feature. The old uh, engine had a single belt, this has dual belts. This also has a much larger alternator, 95 amps opposed to the 45 amp. So we have a bigger alternator capacity there. Um, we got a new hose here that's not uh, seen on the other engine. This is tapping off of the cool water. The pump's coming through. This is your water uh, intake and pressure out. This is pressurized line here. This is going to the fuel pump. Now this engine has two fuel pumps on it. There's a low pressure pickup pump which is hidden underneath here which draws the fuel out of the tank, brings it up to five, six pounds of pressure and pushes it into this high pressure pump. Now the bottom canister here is, uh, it, it, it's kind of hard to describe this, but there is a separate canister between this and the actual fuel pump. This contains water inside. Uh, now it cannot get in contact with the fuel pump, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and also the low pressure pump has water lines wrapped around it for cooling. This is to keep the fuel cool to pre help prevent vapor lock issues. So that's a, a marine power feature. Um, I think that's it. You can barely see the low pressure pump down here uh, on the front. Now one minor change, the, uh, the engine comes standard with the um, grounding post and trommel on the back of the engine, uh, which would be common for a V-drive, which most ski boats are built with V-drive today. But this being a mid-engine boat, uh, I've added a new bolt up under here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a new bolt for our ground cable. Our ground cable is going to attach there, and that part of the block has been ground smooth, so we've got a good contact. Uh, so let's rotate it around a little bit. Um, now, as you remember, the transmission was reused from the old boat and the old engine, so that's been reattached to this motor. Um, this has, the, the old one had cast iron exhaust manifolds, this has cast aluminum manifolds, they're also larger ported, you know, squeeze a little extra horsepower out of it. Uh, before I go into the boat, I want to make sure that my trunnion pins are loose. Uh, so when I go to do the initial set in alignment that this is all adjustable. There is a knock sensor on the side of the block. There's actually one on both sides of the block. Um, this is for the uh, engine computer system. It will listen for uh, premature knocking. If it senses it, it will take corrective actions and ret uh, retard timing, enrich fuel, all that good stuff. Uh, so when you're winterizing your engine, this is kind of a, an interesting thing. You've got to pull the bolt out to drain the block. Uh, always be careful with your knock sensors if you have one. Um, and I don't know if we can see this all, but this oil pan uh, was a special order on this engine because it's going into a flat bottom tournament ski boat, an old school flat bottom tournament ski boat. The standard GM oil pan has a bottom drain and the clearances are so close on the bottom of these boats that a bottom drain will not work. Now the old Ford had a side drain. It had clearance. 
So we had to opt up for the uh, optional cast aluminum oil pan with a side oil drain kit. So this uh, was configured for this boat when the engine was ordered. And I think that takes care of that side. We keep rotating this around. Uh, again, we have our, our old Borgwarner Velvet Drive transmission. Um, one of the features, the differences, uh, in fact, I'll show you something that was missing here. Uh, the Ford had the starter motor right here. Uh, the Marine Power Engine comes with a top mount starter, uh, so you no longer have to get down on your hands and knees underneath the bilge and try to find those bolts that are hard to get to. Uh, so this is a top mount starter above the transmission, easy access, easy to get to. Uh, our main battery cable will come up and tie into here. Now here's another difference between a modern engine. Uh, I hate to say this, but we're going to put a, a smart engine into a dumb boat. Uh, this boat was originally built 30 years ago. There were no computers on engines. Uh, they were carbureted and cable driven and it was all mechanical. Uh, so one of the differences is with our battery cable, we have dual battery cables, a main cable and then a small wire which will go back to the battery for our smart start system. Uh, kind of like a modern car, uh, all you got to do is tap the, the key to the start and it will crank the engine until it starts. It also prevents you from trying to crank it while it's already running. But there are two hot cables, one large, one small. Uh, which we've already addressed. I'll show you that in a minute in the boat. Uh, so that's a little bit different. There is a lot of wire. A modern engine has a lot of wire in it. We're not going to go into the details on that, but there is a bunch of wire in here. Uh, continuing around, our transmission oil cooler is back in its normal spot. I uh, don't know if we're going to be able to see this, but the this engine does not have a traditional throttle like you would think of on a, uh, uh, a carburetor. And we still have a cable driven throttle control, cable driven shift control for the trans. Uh, this motor is capable of going into a modern ski boat which has neither of those things. They shift electronically, they uh, adjust the, 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 the throttle electronically. Uh, the modern ski boats have no shift or throttle cables at the helm station. It's all wires. So there is a component here that uh, comes with the motor that uh, uh, you have to find a mounting place for a mechanical throttle cable uh, mechanism. Uh, it's, a, it's like a rheostat or a throttle position uh, that uh, I attached up here. I had to find a mounting location, I had to create a bracket. Uh, so that it, uh, the cable will come around and mount just like the old carburetor location did. So these are all things that you have to do when you get a motor. You've got to make all these little adjustments to, to make sure it's going to fit in your application. Okay, uh, next thing. Now this is a, a unique feature to the marine power motors. Uh, and, and some of the others have it. But the oil filter, which you've got to get your hand in here to get it and, and try to get it off, is not here. It's got a remote oil uh, filter. So the oil filter is up here. Now, so it'll be really easy to access. Uh, again, on this side, we've got another knock sensor, uh, which threads, so there's a bolt that holds it into the side of the block. Uh, added to the motor since it came in was our, our cooling line. Our water line is coming across and going to our raw water pump. So. When we get in the boat, I'll go over some things on the top of the motor, but uh, that's our new motor and uh, supplied by Marine Power Engines, and we're about to roll this in and try to set it down on the boat nice and gentle and see uh, if we have any clearance issues. Pretty good here. Got 
Okay, since we are reusing the old transmission, uh, one thing that will stay consistent uh, between the two engines is the transmission mounting is going to be the same place, same holes, same everything. The front is different. Uh, that will have to get drilled. Our installation required additional shim stock to be added between the uh, motor mounts and the engine bed. Uh, here we're uh, drilling out some new mounts in the drill press. Um, you're going to see that uh, we end up with additional shims at the transmission mount and uh, I think about an inch of shims on the underneath the front mounts um, to get this to align right. Okay, well I've got the motor set and aligned. I'm going to go through a couple things that needed to be done. On the rear mounts, the factory had half inch shim stock on the back mounts. I had to add a quarter inch to that so we've got three quarter inch worth of shim to bring the Chevrolet motor where it needs to be. Part of this has to do with bringing the shaft up where it should be. I'm going to take a look now around the front. This, by the way, is my favorite alignment tool. I have a four foot crowbar that I use. And that's my favorite by far. You can barely see our front mount. Here's our forward mount with two half inch shim stock bars. I can see all my uh, shavings yet from the aluminum I had to drill through and of course run longer bolts but we've got to clean up the aluminum next. Got the shaft coming right through the center of the shaft log. Okay, our uh, shaft is coming through the center of the shaft log. Uh, I've adjusted the up and down and the rights and the lefts I've uh, secured everything except for our last uh, trunnion pinch down bolts. But to verify, what I like to do is push the shaft forward, rotate, and then take your 15 10 thousandths feeler gauge. It does not want to go in the top, it does not want to go in the side does not want to go in the bottom and it really doesn't want to go in this side so we're going to call that good because I'm going to after we run this boat I'll uh, double check the alignment one more time before we leave ship it but uh, 15 10 thousandths feeler gauge does not want to go between the coupling halves so we're spot on. Time to lock it down and bolt it up. Okay, there are several obstacles that you have to overcome when you're repowering a boat that's got a different engine, different arrangement. Um, the first one we've overcome and it's done. And it's getting the engine set, aligned. Uh, it required shim stock, additional shim stock in the rear mounts, the transmission mounts and it required new shim stock in the front mounts, a total of one inch on each side. Uh, so the motor is set. Uh, all preliminary measurements with the motor box clearance are, are good at this point. Um, so the next thing, I like to work the, the largest items uh, going down to the uh, smaller items. The next one is going to be exhaust. Uh, those are big pieces, big parts. Um, electrical connections are going to be small uh, and easy and very you know maneuverable you can move things around uh, fuel line was already pre run on the uh, starboard side of the stringer it aligns up fine with the intake on the fuel pump so that's going to be easy um, after we have the exhaust done and the and the engine's already set. The next will be your plumbing, your water intake hoses, and the seawater strainer. Those are yet to come. Uh, and then it's all downhill. You know, shift cable, throttle cable, those are all uh, easy to do. So we have our first issue 
we have new mufflers that will come in here and they're three inch or everything on the boat is three inch the motor is four inch this is four inch discharge now here's a common reduction angle elbow normally it's right up here tight and it, if we had a different arrangement that may work we could really tuck it in and get it nice and tight but the, in this application that's not going to work so well so extending this back looks like it's going to be our best route I've got a clear shot here and we can use some 3 inch flexible hose so that's the next thing I'm going to work on is trying to get this exhaust uh, configured. The hoses on the back of the exhaust are not there. I'm going to leave those for last because I don't know exactly where it's going to align fore and aft. So you just got to do it one step at a time and think your way through it uh, and look for all these obstacles. Right now I see a, a battery cable issue that could come into play so <clears throat> I'm going to reroute that just a little bit and get it uh, to where it comes in at a different angle to give us more room for the exhaust. All right, back to work. Okay, we've uh, overcome obstacle number two, which is putting in the exhaust system. Uh, if you look real close, we've actually got the shift cable in place. The throttle cable is in place. Um, the next uh, thing is the uh, plumbing, the seawater strainer and the hoses that connect it to the motor. That will go in next. Yeah. Here's one of the things I also completed was the uh, bilge blower. The bilge blower, this is the way we started doing the uh, mounting in 99, I think it was, for the, the laser model. It's simply a uh, uh, piece of aluminum flat bar that is bolted to the underside of the floor mount and then the blower is bolted to that and wired in. Uh, this is a much cleaner, neater, better installation. Okay, here you can see our new seawater strainer is installed in the boat. Uh, if your boat doesn't have one, you may want to think about getting one. Here's the other side of the seawater strainer connected to the transmission oil cooler. Okay, we're getting uh, near the final stages here. Now, the old engine was a mechanical fuel pump. The new motors are all electric fuel pumps. One of the uh, things I like to do, this is the new fuel line coming from the tank. Uh, electric fuel pumps do not like to run dry. Now this engine has been run uh, down at Marine Power so we know there's fuel in this uh, fuel filter and fuel pump system uh, but our lines are all perfectly dry so one of the things I like to do is make sure before the ignition key is ever turned on that I've got fuel in my fuel line and it's primed so that in case I turn the key on, just to check that the fuel pumps are going to run every time that key comes on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add fuel to the line. Let's see if we can, we're just going to inject fuel in the dry line as opposed to waiting for it to come up from the tank. I'm going to let that go down a little bit. And that may be all, all she's going to take. Okay, this is what we've been waiting for here. Um, fuel lines are hooked up and primed. Uh, the throttle cable and shift cable I've got disconnected right now. Um, water plumbing is done. I've got a temporary uh, hose running to our bucket which is full of water. I can see that from here, so if it's not drawing water, I know we've got a, a plumbing issue I need to address. So we're going to prime the pumps and crank and see what happens. There's one prime, second prime. We'll do it one more time and then we'll crank. Fuel pumps recycling.
in all that water. You're having a hard time keeping up with it on idle. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed that last little bit of our uh, test drive. That was kind of a teaser for the next and last episode of our Rare Bird Project. Uh, next episode will be the finale, the final finishing and the rollout. So I hope you enjoyed this. And remember to click on the little boat icon to subscribe if you like our videos and want to see more of them. Uh, please subscribe. So thank you and God bless.